Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish, and I am your trainer for this Azure Administrator Associate AZ104 Certification Examination Course. We are entering a brand new module. The fifth module is called Intersite Connectivity. And the first lesson we are going to learn on this fifth module is all about VNet pairing. Let's have a look at what are the topics we are going to learn on this video. We will start with VNet pairing. We'll understand the concepts and the benefits of VNet pairing. We will learn about gateway transit and connectivity and how to configure the VNet pairing and the service chaining. And throughout the video, whenever I explain about a concept, I will take you back and forth the presentation and the Azure portal so you exactly know what it means and you understand it thoroughly. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Perhaps the simplest and quickest way to connect your VNets is to use VNet pairing. Virtual network pairing enables you to seamlessly connect two Azure virtual networks. Once paired, the virtual networks appear as one for connectivity purposes. And there are two types of VNet pairing we need to understand. The first one is called regional VNet pairing and the second one is called global VNet pairing. So let me, ex so let me explain you the concept behind regional and global. Regional VNet pairing connects Azure virtual network in the same region. And the global VNet pairing connect the Azure virtual network in different regions. When creating a global pairing, the peered virtual network can exist in any Azure public cloud region or China cloud regions, but not in government cloud regions. You can only peer virtual network in the same region in the Azure government cloud regions. That's the one thing we need to keep in mind. So there are lots of benefits for using the VNet pairing. So let's understand one by one. So one of the key benefits of VNet pairing is private. Network traffic between peered virtual network is private. Traffic between the virtual network is kept on Microsoft Backbone network. No public internet, gateways or encryption is required in the communication between these virtual networks. Another benefit is performance. A low latency, high bandwidth connection between resources in different virtual networks. One another benefit is communication. The ability for resources in one virtual network to communicate with the resources in a different virtual network once the virtual networks are peered. And VNet peering is seamless. The ability to transfer data across Azure subscriptions, deployment models, and across Azure regions. And finally, with VNet peering, you don't have to worry about any sort of disruptions. No downtime to resources in either virtual network when creating the peering or after the peering is created. Let's understand the gateway transit and connectivity. When virtual networks are peered, you can configure a VPN gateway in the peered virtual network as a transit point. In this case, a peered virtual network can use the remote gateway to gain access to other resources. A virtual network can have only one gateway, and the gateway transit is supported for both VNet peering and global VNet peering. So when you allow gateway transit in virtual network, so when you allow the transit in virtual network, it can communicate to resources outside the peering. So in this scenario, the gateway transit allows peered networks to share the gateway and get access to these resources. This means that you do not need to deploy a VPN gateway in the peered virtual network. So please note that the default VNet peering configuration provides full connectivity. So the network security groups can be applied in either virtual network to block access to other virtual networks or subnets. 
When configuring virtual network pairing, you can either open or close the network security group rules between the virtual networks. All right, so let's learn about how to configure the VNet pairing. So I'm going to take you through the Azure portal to show you where to configure the VNet pairing. So I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go to virtual networks. As you can see that I have many virtual networks available. So I'm going to pick a virtual network here and under settings, you can find pairings. So click on pairings. As you can see that the pairing status is connected and I have paired with DMS VNet and the gateway transit is disabled. If I want to add a new pairing, I can click on add and provide the name of the pairing and select the right subscription, the virtual network which I would like to pair with and other configuration which I need to choose. Some of the settings which I need to be aware of is, let's assume if I need to pair with one other network, I'm gonna select. I select the subscription, I select the VNet which I like to pair and the name of the pairing. And let's look at the options available. The first option is allow forward traffic. And we have other configurations we need to be aware of. Allow forward traffic allows traffic not originating from within the peer virtual network into your virtual network. And allow gateway transit allows the peer virtual network to use your virtual network gateway. The peer cannot already have the gateway configured. If you select the allow gateway transit on one virtual network, then you should select the use remote gateway on the other virtual network as well. So let's understand service chaining. So the VNet pairing is non-transitive. This means that if you establish VNet pairing between VNet 1 and VNet 2 and between VNet 2 and VNet 3, VNet pairing capabilities does not apply between VNet 1 and VNet 3. However, you can leverage user-defined routes and service chaining to implement custom routing that will provide transitivity. And this allows you to provide, implement a multi-level hub and spoke architecture and overcome the limit of the number of VNet pairings per virtual network. So what about the hub and spoke architecture? You can deploy the hub and spoke network where the hub network can host the infrastructure such as the network virtual appliance or VPN gateway. And the spoke virtual network can then peer with hub virtual network and traffic can flow through the virtual network appliance or VPN gateways in the hub virtual network. Another thing we need to understand is user-defined routes and service chaining. Virtual network pairing enables the next hop in the user-defined route to be the IP address of the virtual machine in the peered virtual network or the VPN gateway. And the service chaining enables you to direct the traffic from one virtual network to the virtual appliance or the virtual network gateway in a peered virtual network through user-defined routes. You can check the status of the VNet pairing by looking at updating or connected. When you create the pairing to the second virtual network from the first virtual network, the pairing status is called initiated. And when you create the peering from the second virtual network to the first virtual network, the status is changed from initiated to connected. All right, so now we understand what is VNet pairing. In the next lesson, we're going to learn about VPN gateway connections. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.